welcome to the ongoing sessions on transmission and distribution under the e sectiona program of vtu so in the last session we saw the supports of the transmission line that is the tower and the different kinds of poles and we saw a wide variety of conductors available for us to choose from so the choice of the conductor will depend on the weather conditions the operating voltage and how much of money you can afford to spend for the lines we will start the session from where we stopped in the last session we have what are called as bundled conductors so in a bundled conductor we have more than one conductor per phase this conductor itself can be stranded the reason is that the current carrying capacity can be increased so it is like providing parallel paths for the current to flow normally for voltages less than 230 kv we can use round conductors but however for voltages greater than 230 kv round conductors are found to cause excessive corona loss so to overcome this more than one conductor is used per phase and this is called as bundled conductors so you can have bundling of three conductors or four conductors and obviously i need some kind of a support to hold all of them together and so you can see here this these are called as braces so here i have four conductors which are bundled together and these are called as braces so these will prevent any kind of an oscillation and provide mechanical support to the conductors similarly you can see here i have three conductors per phase this is the brace and here i have two and here again i have four so this is what a bundled conductor looks like now what are the advantages of bundled conductors firstly they have lesser reactance due to more what is called as the geometric mean distance remember that this bundling of conductors is for one phase so all the currents will be carrying all the conductors will be carrying currents of the same phase in the bundled conductors therefore we arrive at what is called as a geometric mean distance okay what would be the equivalent of this bundled conductor if i were to replace it with a single conductor that's basically the meaning so how to calculate the gmd you will do in the subsequent sessions now this will have a larger diameter and therefore a lesser reactance now what's the advantage of having a lesser reactance so you know the drop in the transmission line is equal to i z so when the reactance is reduced automatically the voltage drop across the line also reduces what does this do we discussed in the previous session about regulation so this will improve the regulation this will improve the regulation and also the reactive losses will come down the i squared x loss will be reduced this is the first main advantage of using bundled conductors the second is the voltage gradient is reduced in the vicinity of the line what is the meaning of voltage gradient the voltage per centimeter okay so the breakdown of a material depends on the voltage gradient if the voltage gradient is reduced there are lesser chances of breakdown of air and therefore the problem of corona and interference with communication is reduced 
since corona reduces i had told you in the previous session that corona causes loss the loss will also reduce and once the loss reduces the transmission efficiency improves transmission efficiency improves means you can transform more power through the lines because you have lesser losses therefore the power transfer capability also increase, increases now when you use a single conductor we have what is called as the skin effect so what exactly is skin effect skin effect is the phenomenon wherein alternating current crowds around the surface that means the current does not penetrate deep into the conductor for example if this is a conductor and i pass an alternating current through it the current will be confined to some small depth inside it doesn't go to the core of the conductor so you can literally say the core is a waste because it is not actually carrying any current that is the meaning of skin effect so it depends on the frequency so the skin effect will cause a reduction in the effective area of the conductor and therefore the apparent resistance increases hence skin effect leads to more conductor losses now in bundled conductors the skin effect is reduced and therefore the losses are reduced further the cooling will improve because the current is split into more than one conductors and we can conclude and say that bundle conductors have a lot of advantages so for higher voltages they are always preferred so we have achieved and learnt about the previously quoted objectives that is to know about the conductors the supporting structures now for the next topic i'm going to discuss let's define the objectives of our learning the first is the importance of sag what is sag why is it important and how do i calculate sag for supports at same level and how do i calculate sag for supports at different levels so we will be seeing these topics now what is sag see supposing i have a line okay and i support it at the two ends i have to support it at the two ends obviously i cannot let it loose so the support may be a tower or poles so this is the shortest distance between the two supports this is called as the span the horizontal distance between the two supports is called as the span now i may have a conductor supported tightly at the two edges it is like you know you have a stretch of wire and i've held it tightly what will happen so this there will be lot of tension right you think of a rubber band which you have stretched and held it so supposing there is wind or there is ice falling on it or there is snow immediately what happens because there is lot of tension this will just break okay so what do we have to do i don't hold it tightly i don't hold it tightly i allow it to sag that means i connect a conductor of a size slightly longer than the shortest distance supposing the distance between the two supports is 100 meters i connect a conductor of maybe 102 meters so if you want to talk colloquially you can say the wire is not taut but it is loose slightly loose so when it is loose it will sag because i have more length than what is required so there will be a small dip somewhere 
that is the meaning of sag and why is it necessary because if there is a lot of tension there is a lot of high possibility of the conductor breaking so sag is intentionally provided sag is intentionally provided now the difference between the level of supports and the lowest point the lowest point in the conductor so if the conductor sags if the conductor sags i have the lowest point so the difference between the level of the support and the lowest point is the parameter sag the phenomenon of sag is allowing for the wire to be loose and to take a bend and the parameter sag is the mathematical value is the difference between the level of supports and the lowest point in the line okay so let's all agree that sag is necessary now you can see here i have ab so i have supports at the two points ab and this is an exaggerated uh, line but just to show you the concept so your line doesn't bend 50% there will be a small bend small dip so o is the lowest point o is the lowest point and the difference between the support and the lowest point this distance this is called as the sag s so here i am making an assumption that the supports at the two ends are in the same height say i have a road i have a road the pole is at one end of the road and there's another pole at another end of the road and you have a line connected between the two right the supports are at the same level so this is what a sag means this is what a sagged wire would look like is it mandatory as we discussed it protects the conductor from excessive tension so to permit a safe level of tension in the conductors the conductors are not fully stretched but they are allowed to have a sag if you stretch it fully during installation then the wind pressure may break the conductors when supports are in the same level the line forms what we call as a catenary catenary is very common in engineering systems like a bridge okay the bridge also has the shape of a catenary the curve looks similar to a parabola the curve looks similar to a parabola and as i mentioned what i showed you is a very very exaggerated figure the sag is actually small when compared to the length of the line the sag is very small when compared to the length of the line now the tension at each point acts tangentially and the horizontal component of the tension is uniform throughout the conductor length so where will the tension be maximum so in this figure in the previous figure here where will the tension be maximum the tension will be obviously maximum at the supports and since it is tangential at the lowest point the tension will act in a horizontal direction okay keep this in mind so the tension is maximum at supports and minimum at the lowest point of the curve now let us see whether we can calculate sag because i need to make an estimation of how much the line can withstand now what will happen when there is a sag what is what will happen when there is a sag at the lowest point i have to maintain enough clearance from the ground because if the line sags too much if it is too loose if the line sags too much then the ground clearance is reduced at the lowest point so we have to keep this in mind so you can just see a quick comparison of what happens if the sag is low too low that means the tension is high and less conductor is required because i am not allowing it to sag and lower supports are required because the ground clearance can be lesser if the sag is high 
the tension is reduced but I may require slightly more conductor length and higher supports are required but it improves the reliability of my system. There is less chance of the wire or line breaking. So what all affects sag? Common sense. First the weight of the conductor per unit length. Because the weight itself is going to pull the conductor down because of gravity. Next deposition of ice, snow, the wind pressure, all this will increase sag. The span length, obviously longer the line more likely that there will be a sag. Temperature rise, what happens when the temperature rises? The conductor or the line gets heated up and it will sag more. Tension in the conductor, remember you can't have low tension and low sag, both are not possible. You have high tension and low sag or low tension and high sag, okay, you can't have both. So we'll see how to calculate the sag. So we'll do a little bit of mathematical or uh, derivations and uh, calculations. Now I should adjust the tension so that it is safe. So normally any material has what is called as the ultimate tensile strength. That is the strength at which it will break down. So if you apply that much of tension, it is sure that the line will break. That is the ultimate tensile strength. It depends on the material. It depends on the material. So when we were discussing conductors, we saw that uh, you know, reinforcement with steel improves the tensile strength and re reinforcement with other alloys also improves the tensile strength. Now, I cannot subject my, I cannot take the risk of subjecting my transmission line to the ultimate tensile strength. So, we have what is called as a factor of safety. So, if the tensile strength is x, then I don't exceed more than x by 2. So 50% is all that I allow the tension to appear on the line. So what is my factor of safety? 2. I can make it 3 even better. That means I load, I maximum load, tension load on the line will be less than one third. Okay. So, if you just want a rough calculation, you can use a factor of safety of 2. Normally, we use 2. That means your tension permitted is only 50% of the ultimate tensile strength. So, now let's come to a little bit of mathematics. Simple maths. So, here you can see I have two supports. I have two supports at the two ends. Okay. And this is the span, that is the length, the shortest horizontal distance between the two supports. That's called as the span. And the difference between the support and the lowest point is the sag, which I want to calculate. This is the conductor and this is the ground. So this is the ground clearance. So now you see why I said if there is a higher sag, we need higher support so that this doesn't come closer to the ground. We have to maintain a minimum ground clear clearance from a safety point of view. Right? So this is how it is physically. Now let's come to how I will map it to some mathematical parameters. So I have a support at A and another support at B. Notice that both of them are at the same level. We call this as supports at the same level. Supports at the same level. So, obviously, since the conductor is uniform, you can expect the sag to be maximum here. So, the maximum point is O. Maximum where the sag is maximum is O. So, I will be calculating this maximum sag which is going to occur S. Clear? So, the conductor span 
is divided into L by 2, L by 2 and maximum sag occurs at O. Maximum sag occurs at O. All these are very exaggerated pictures. You don't have such a deep sag. Okay. But for us to calculate, I have just drawn an exaggerated picture. Now let's consider a point P. I'll consider a point P. Okay. Now let this P, the coordinates of P be X and Y with respect to O. What is the meaning of that? With respect to O, point P is at a horizontal distance of X and a vertical distance of Y with respect to point O. So the coordinates of P with respect to O is X, Y. Not product. Coordinate X, comma Y. Okay. These are the coordinates of point P. Clear? And let W, I have to put a term here W. This is the weight of the conductor per unit length. The weight of the conductor per unit length. Okay. So, what is the weight of the conductor for a length X? So, now you see here this is actually a curve. This is a curve. So, this length of this arc will be slightly greater than x. x is the shortest, it is a coordinate point. So, the length of the curve will be slightly greater than x but not too much greater. So, as an approximation, I can assume that the weight of this arc that is OP, that is the conductor arc OP is W into x. It is actually W into the length OP. But I am approximating the length OP to be approximately equal to X. So the weight is WX. In which direction the, does the weight of a body act? Obviously in the downward direction. Now where is this weight? See the weight is uniform. I have a conductor the weight is uniformly spread out. Now I have approximately said this weight is WX. That is the weight. Where does it act? Actually, it acts uniformly all over. But to get an idea of how much sag it is likely to create, let us assume that the weight of the entire length occurs at the midpoint. Okay. Weight is a distributed parameter. I am assuming that it is occurring at the midpoint. We are very used to such assumptions in our engineering, especially in electrical engineering. If you take a transmission line, I say the resistance of the line is 1 ohm. The resistance is spread throughout, but we are assuming it is lumped. Okay. Similarly, I lump it and assume that this weight Wx acts at the midpoint of OP, this point. So, obviously, if the OP is X, then the midpoint will be at a distance X by 2. So, let us quickly get everything clear. I have supports at equal lengths A and B. The span is L. So, half section is L by 2 and L by 2. The lowest point is O. The tension at O is horizontal because it has to be tangential. And the distance between the lowest point and the support is the sag S. Consider a point P which is at a coordinate x, y with respect to O. W is the weight of the conductor per unit length. So the length of the arc OP is approximated to be Wx and assumed to operate at the midpoint x by 2. Okay. So you can take a pen and a paper and work along with me for better clarity. So, you see how the sags look like. Okay. So, the lines are all sagged. This is the physical sag. So, this is just of what we discussed. Again, for your recap, L is the distance between the supports in meter. Be careful of the units. W is the weight of the conductor per meter. So, it can be given in kg per meter or grams per centimeter or newton per meter. Be careful about the units. T is the tension in the conductor. So, the tension and the weights 
should have the same units. One cannot be in Newton and one cannot be in kgs. So again, pay attention to that. The coordinates of P is xy with respect to O. The curvature is so small that OP is approximately equal to x. And the tension at any point on the conductor acts tangentially. Hence, at the lowest point, the tension acts horizontal. So now, what are the forces acting on the segment OP? There are two forces, right? One is the force due to the weight of the conductor. That is, it is pulling it down. And other is the tangential pull, the tension. The tension acting horizontally. So there are two forces acting on the point P. Now we know from physics that for equilibrium, the moments of the two forces must be equal. The moments of the two forces must be equal. So the tension T is acting horizontally and the vertical distance, that is the distance perpendicular to the tension is Y. Therefore, the moment due to the tension T is T into Y. Similarly, Wx, this is the force due to the weight. It is acting vertically and its perpendicular distance is the horizontal distance of the point P which is where this is acting that is x by 2. Point P is at x and we are approximating that the entire weight of the segment OP acts at the center which is x by 2. So this is the moment due to the weight. So for the line to be in equilibrium the two moments must be equal. If one is greater than the other then the wire gets pulled in that direction. If the tension is more the wire gets pulled horizontally. If the weight is more than the tension, it's, it may break and snap and fall to the ground. So for it to remain in equilibrium, the two must be equal. Very simple. So therefore, from here, I can get y is equal to w x squared by 2t. Very important formula, simple formula. What is y? What is y? The vertical distance of point P. Any point P, I have not said where it is. Any point, arbitrary, arbitrary point P. So the vertical distance with respect to the lowest point is Y. X is the horizontal distance with respect to the lowest point. W is the weight of the conductor per unit length. And T is the tension. So this is a general expression for the sag at any point P. Now, I need the sag at the lowest point because that is how the sag is defined. Right. So, at the lowest point, what is x? x is L by 2. Half. Okay. So, s is, y will be s. Maximum. So, s is equal to, so here s corresponds to y. So, the corresponding value is of L is, L, x is L by 2. So, S is equal to W L by 2 whole squared by 2 T. That is W L squared by 8 T. What sag is this? This is the sag of the entire conductor. So, this sag appears where? At the center of the conductor. So, I have a conductor. So, the, at the center, the conductor will sag. And this is S. That is S. Okay. So, how did I derive it? I took an arc and arbitrarily calculate the sag at a point P and I push the point P to the edge. So, X becomes L by 2 and Y becomes the sag. So, you can see now what are all the parameters on which sag is dependent. Sag is dependent on the weight of the conductor obviously, on the length of the span L squared and on the tension. So all these three affect the sag of the line. Now since it is a catenary, 
there is a formula let us not derive it the derivation is not necessary if i know the sag what should be the total length of the line clear that is a arc it's it forms a complete arc so what is the length of the arc so approximately it is given by l is this is the formula this is from the equation of a catenary this is got from the equation of a catenary as i told you used in many engineering systems so this will give you an idea of how much conductor length is required how much conductor length is actually required if you make provision for the span now let us do some simple examples and it will be very clear to you how to solve for the numerical value of the sac the ultimate strength and the weight of an overhead line is 10000 newtons and the weight is 6 newton per meter so you can see both the units match both are in newtons if the factor of safety is 5 and the span length is 180 meters determine the sag and the total length of the line between the spans this factor of safety of 5 is pretty high huh? it's it's quite high but uh, so it will lead to you know a lot of sag it will lead to lot of sag so you need higher supports you need uh, more clearance from the ground but people may be ready to pay the price for that because safety is more important anyway the factor of safety can be anything more than 2 okay so let's see how to solve it very simple w is the weight of the conductor per unit length again i reiterate make sure of the units this is in newton per meter so it's fine sometimes the line may be given in kilometers and this may be per meter and one may be in kgs one may be in grams so make sure that you make suitable unit conversions so w is 6 newtons per meter and the stress t stress or tension is what the tensile stress the tensile strength divided by the factor of safety so the maximum tensile strength is 10000 newtons the meaning is if you apply 10000 newtons the wire will snap the line will snap snap but i am only allowing it to go up to 2000 newtons i am allowing it to go up to 2000 newtons and the span length l is 180 meters see understand what we are trying to do here as a designer from a design perspective so i know the supports are are at a distance of 180 meters the weight of the conductor is from the type of conductor i am using okay and that particular material the maximum tensile strength is 10000 newtons now i want to be very safe and i do not want to exceed 2000 newtons so for that what do i have to do i have to calculate the sag and I, from the sag i will find out how much is the length of the conductor i have to actually connect between the two supports that's the whole design here okay so as simple straight forward w l squared by 8t so 6 into 180 squared by 8 into 2000 that is 12.15 meters so that means i have 180 meters okay so at the center this wire will sag and this center maximum will be 12.15 meters now what is the length of the conductor i require to allow this sag so the length there is a formula i told you this is from the equation of the catenary and substituting we know l l is 180 w is 6 again l is 180 t is 2000 i get 182.18 meters 182.18 meters so what is the meaning of this so if i connect it straight i need 180 meters if i connect it straight i need 180 meters now what i do i connect 
2.18 meters. So extra 2.18 meters of conductor is required so that this tension is loose and it can sag. So it does not break. Exactly like, you know, stretching a rubber band. If you hold it tight, it can snap. Loosen it slightly, it's not so easy to snap it. That's what we are doing with making a provision for sag. Now let's take one more example. A line conductor weighs 780 kg per thousand meters and has a span of 300 meters. Calculate the allowable sag in the line if the maximum tension in the line is 150 kgs. Again now we are okay with the units. The tension weight are all in kgs. So you have to find out W. W is the, don't forget, it's the weight per unit length. So 780 kgs per 1000 meters. So 780 by 1000, it will be 0.78 kg per meter. 0.78 kg per meter. L is 300, T is 1500. We are good. So simple allowable sag is W L squared by 8 T. 5.85 meters. Now, can you just think of what are the factors which would affect this sag? What happens if I apply a higher tension? That means my factor of safety is lower. So when the factor of safety is lower, tension allowed is higher. So if this is higher, sag will be smaller. So if sag is smaller, there is more likely chance of the wire breaking. That is the reason why we use higher factors of safety. What happens if you increase the length of the span? If you increase the length of the span, the sag will increase by a factor of L squared. Increase L squared. It's proportional to L squared. So if you double the length, the sag will increase four times. If you double the weight of the conductor, the sag will increase two times. If you double the tension, the sag will reduce by half. So these are the three main parameters which affect the sag. So now let's just have a quick recap. Is sag necessary? Absolutely for the safety of the line and what we just now discussed if length of the span is double what happens to sag it will become four times if the weight of the conductor is doubled what happens to sag it will double if factor of safety is reduced what happens to sag sag will reduce is it good or bad bad not good so we saw what is sag, how to calculate sag when the supports are at the same level. Now let us see what happens when the supports are at different levels. Can you think of when supports will be at different levels? Obviously, if you want to draw a line through a hill, I'm sure all of you would have seen transmission lines across mountainous regions. So I'll have a tower at the lower end of the hill and another tower at the higher end. So obviously the supports cannot be at the same level. Okay. So there are many places where the terrain is not flat. And you will always have supports at different levels. So we will see how do we calculate the sag in such cases. So now you see here. Let us understand this figure completely, what we are doing here. I have one, this is the ground, this is the ground, okay. I have one support at point A1, which is at a height H1 from the ground, the lower support. We call it as the lower support because it is at a lower height. I have another support at point A2. And this is at a height H2. Now, 
Now, if it is in the same line, if the supports are at the same levels, then your sag forms a catenary. Okay. Now, we will see what happens to the sag here. So, obviously, since the levels are different, the sag, maximum sag does not occur at the center, like in the previous case. Let us assume it occurs at a point O. Okay. So, the conductor bends like this. The conductor bends like this and the lowest point is O. Now, the sag of O from level A1 is S1. Now, the sag will be different from the two levels because both are at different heights. Is S1. And the sag with respect to height A2 with point A2 is S2. Clear? So, the sag is lowest at point O. The sag is lowest at point O. And it is at a distance, vertical distance of S1 from the lower support and S2 from the higher support. And the difference between S2 and S1, we call it as H. The distance between S2 and S1, we call it as H. Are we clear? Now, this is about the vertical distances. So, now we will see the horizontal distances are A1 and A2. So, the horizontal distance from lower support is A1 and higher support is A2. So, we will quickly again recap what we have. I have two supports A1 and A2. The lower support A1 is at a height H1 from the ground and the upper support A2 is at a height H2 from the ground. Okay. The maximum sag occurs at point O. The maximum support uh, sag occurs at point O. So, this O has coordinates. I can write the coordinate here. Has the coordinates A1 and S1 with respect to the lower support and with respect to the higher support similarly this point O has coordinates A2 and S2. Okay, The vertical distance is S2, the horizontal distance is A2. So now we are very clear about this. So your entire line is divided into two sections, OA1 is one section and OA2 is another section. The sag in the first section is S1 and sag in the second section is S2. We will use the same formula we derived earlier. So, we have already derived sag Y. So, now what, what has happened? I have a part of the network, part of the line. That is similar to what we did with sags of same support levels. I can use the same derivation. So, there we derived y is equal to w x squared by 2t, right? Because the two segments are similar to the segments we had in the previous case. So, in the first section, the vertical distance is S1. We saw it has the coordinates A1 and S1. So, in this formula, y is the vertical coordinate and x is the horizontal coordinate with respect to the support. So, S1 is equal to W A1 squared by 2T. I am just substituting for Y and X here for the two segments OA1 and OA2. Similarly, in the second segment, Y is S2, that is the vertical coordinator, co coordinate and X is A2, that is the horizontal coordinate. So, S2 is equal to W A2 squared by 2T. Now, the difference between the two is the sag S. S2 minus S1. So, I will just write here. I will substitute for S2 and S1. S or you can even denote it by H, the height difference. So, W by 2T, A2 squared minus A1 squared. So, do not forget. I am assuming that this is at a higher level and this is at a lower level. So, this I can write it as A2 plus A1 into A2 minus A1. Simple arithmetic. S is the difference.
difference in the support levels. Difference in the support levels. Now, A1 plus A2 is equal to length of the span, obviously, because if you just see here, A1 plus A2 will be the total length of the span. That is L. I know what is the length of the span. That is a horizontal distance between the two supports. So, substituting, I write here, I substitute for A2 plus A1. S is equal to, I have already derived this. I substitute for this with L and I get S is equal to WL by 2T into A2 minus A1. So, from this, I can write A2 minus A1 is S2T by W by W L. So, what am I trying to do here? I am trying to calculate what will be A1 and A2. That is, I want to get the point of the maximum where the sag is maximum. That point O, I want to get it. So, to locate point O, I should know what is its distance from A1 and what is its distance from A2, support A2. The whole exercise we are doing is because of that. And I know A1 plus A2 is L. So, I have to find A1 and A2. I have two equations in two unknowns. Very simple. I solve for this. And what do I get? I get A1 is L by 2 minus Ts by WL. And A2 is L by 2 plus Ts by WL. So, what have we achieved with this? I have achieved a formula to find the horizontal distance of the point of lowest sag with respect to the two supports with respect to the two supports now you can see it depends on the span l the tension the weight and so on so is it possible for a1 to be negative is it possible for a1 to be negative definitely because ts by wl may be greater than L by 2, in which case A1 can be negative, if I have a high tension, right. So, what is the meaning of A1 being negative? Very interesting. So, you see here, what it means is that this point, you know, if I have supports, assume you have two supports here, right. And this is how the sag occurs. So, this is A1 and this is A2. So, what is happening is this is support 1. Compare these two figures and this is support 2. So, when I calculate this point is outside. This point is outside. That means what happens? I, it, it, it does not actually happen. My length of the conductor is not long enough for the lowest point to occur. It occurs somewhere outside. That is the meaning of A1 being negative. So, what are the three cases I can have? A1 is greater than 0. That is what we have shown in the diagram. Which means that the lowest point lies between the supports. A1 is less than 0 means the lowest point lies outside the span. So, the line actually does not undergo the maximum sag. And A1 is equal to 0 means the lowest point lies at the lowest support. Lowest support point. That is the meaning. Clear? So, these two formula essentially will help you to solve some problems when the supports are at different levels. So, let us take a simple example. W is equal to 0.25 kg per meter. L is equal to 180 meters. And the maximum strength is 2000 kgs. And FOS, it is factor of safety, is equal to 4. There is one support at 80 meters and a second support at 60 meters. Determine the minimum clearance from ground. And minimum point of catenary. So, 
So what do I have? The strength is 2000, factor of safety is 4, therefore the permitted tension is 500 kg. Now S is the difference in levels. So it is 80 minus 60 is 20 meters. Now simple, just substitute in the formula. A is equal to L by 2 minus Ts by Wn. So I get A1 is minus 132.22 meters. So it lies outside the span. So what does it mean? I will just show you here. Say this is the ground. This is the ground. And the lowest support is here. So this is at 60 meters. And the highest support is here. This is at 80 meters. 80 meters. And this is how the sag occurs. So this distance is A1, 132.22 meters. So what should be the minimum ground clearance? So this, this part is anyway not there. I don't have a conductor there. This is mathematical calculation. Right. So I, I have a conductor only stretching like this. And therefore the ground clearance, minimum clearance I require is 60 meters. Minimum clearance I require is 60 meters. That is a clearance to support the lower support. So let us solve some more problems in the next session.